pretty, pretty easy to prove that he did not wreck a car, doesn't know where all of these allegations are coming from. They first popped up in the Washington Post. Others have seized on him uh, as uh, not up to the job, uh, that it's a huge government agency of millions, uh, and that uh, overseeing a medical staff of 16 in the White House doesn't cut it for him. Uh, the president, of course, has argued that no one is prepared or has the background running even the largest hospital system on the planet for this job. Let's get the read from uh, Jonas Max Ferris. We also had Jessica Tarloff and uh, Maddie Doppler. Maddie, um, he's not going anywhere. He says he won't go anywhere. The president mm -hmm. wonders why he puts up with all of this, yeah. uh, but he's not going anywhere. So what do you make yeah. of that? Fair question from President Trump there. But, you know, it was, as you mentioned, the practice in place for making uh, clear whether these allegations are true or false should be pretty straightforward. There's a reason we have a practice in place also to confirm these sorts of uh, cabinet positions. We should be moving forward. The Senate should be doing its job, looking at any of the qualifications that the good doctor might have for this position and making that determination. He should get the chance to talk about the questions that senators may have, too, by uh, being, held, being in a hearing in front front of the Senate. And so far, all we've had are allegations in the press being rumored behind closed doors. That is not quite the process that is supposed to be in place to getting a cabinet secretary confirmed. All right, Jonas, what we do know is in the interim, they're waiting. Uh, they're looking into all this stuff, Republicans and Democrats alike. They're not abandoning him. The president's not abandoning him. But the president also did say, look, if I were you, I wouldn't put up with this nonsense. I mean, I, I don't care about the allegations of, like, car accidents and drunk. I mean, people get in car accidents and drink. That doesn't mean they're bad or good at running hospitals or businesses. So that's what I think the focus should be on. Some of these other allegations sound like they're more relevant to management, which is what the VA needs. So I, I, I'm not the, the personal, solid, you know, indiscretions or whatever. That's not relevant to running a business. You know, uh, Jessica, it comes at a time when a lot of people are questioning why does the president have a devil of a time getting nominees through or even someone like General Mike Pompeo? approved to be Secretary of State, right. that it is like pulling teeth and then some. And now there might be ample grounds to explore in the good doctor's case, but that they just never let up. No, they don't. And Democrats have definitely taken to this strategy as one that benefits them and the, quote, resistance, as it were, to make these hearings as difficult as possible for the nominees. Now, I'm not saying they're inventing issues per se, but when you do look at the numbers and you know that a person is going through because we are in the minority, some of it does feel like you're just slow rolling things, especially with ambassadorships, for instance, like Rick Grinnell, which I believe they are getting to, and Mitch McConnell has brought that up now. Uh, but to the point about Dr. Ronnie Jackson and to what Jonas just said about his personal behavior, there's also accusations of a hostile work environment, which I do think is relevant to his capacity to run running the VA, not only the 375,000 employees, but if he is treating those on his staff even that much smaller in an inappropriate way at all, we certainly don't want that person in a cabinet position. But generally speaking, I agree that the most important thing to be hearing from him in his testimony and for the senators to be looking into is his capacity and ability to be running a bureau of this size. All right. All I know is two former presidents, Maddie, uh, Bar Barack Obama and President Bush, thought very highly of the yeah. doctor. Now, I know that's very, very different in running an agency like this that sure. services more than 11 million veterans, yeah. uh, but, but it doesn't appear at this early stage to be helping him. What do you make of that? Well, Neil, you raise an excellent point, which is one of bipartisan agreement, which is that our VA is not doing its job in serving our veterans. And that is the most crucial qu crucial question ahead of any kind of confirmation or hearing process. And so far, that question really hasn't even been asked or answered in the press or otherwise. There's too much uh, speculation going on about all of these allegations about his personal behavior or what have you. And frankly, I think it's time for, if this is going to be a nomination that moves forward, it to start having the questions that senators need to ask asked publicly and have the doctor defend himself. He should be able to have the chance to have testimony explaining any of these questions about whether or not he is fit to do what is a very big job. Jonas, is this a longer term where this is just going to be the rule of thumb now and a little more if Democrats take control of, of the House? I think it's getting more difficult to, I mean, I think the Democrats are feeling confident from the direction that things seem to be going for them, so they're acting like they're already winning, and it's going to be more difficult to get what is ordinarily a simple thing through and approved is becoming a, this whole battle and a political, where you have to take a stand on it and show the way you are versus the, who's in the White House. And it's, it's annoying. I mean, I, look, I think it'd be better if, in the Trump situation if there was, did this guy run hospitals in the back? Like, I would rather see 
how you get, I don't know how you do that, how you get actual right. executives who run private ones that work well to get the rats out of the VA hospital system, but this could be as good as it can get, and we should just have to go with it. Guys, thank you all very much. Again, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, the White House Choice, the head of the Department of Veteran Affairs, says he isn't going anywhere. He's up for the fight and will fight. The President of the United States indicating he'll support him in that fight. We'll look more to this. Your modern software factory runs millions of lines of code through trillions of connections. You think I'm dramatizing? Think again. Application security, each line of potential breach. That's why checking code before you deploy is.